And this is what brings us on to, we'll, we'll talk about this now, um, for the last few minutes of the program, this whole, what I'll call the Islamicize Me controversy. The reason why I want to talk about it is, I have agreed with some of the criticisms given by James White against David Wood and Sam Shimon and Vocab Malone and there's another guy, forgive, forgive me, but anyway, those guys who did that. Also, um, we have Robert Spencer of Jihad Watch. By the way, when it comes to the issue of scholarship on Islam, of exposing what Islam teaches and all this kind of stuff, there's, in my opinion, there's no better people than Robert Spencer or David Wood on this issue. However, it does not mean, just because their facts are right and all this kind of stuff, that, that, these, that there's no sin involved in the Islamicized me. And by the way, Robert Spencer is not a Christian. Robert Spencer is a Roman Catholic. This has to be pointed out. Are we doing it in terms of, is our exposing of Islam just to preserve Western civilization? I pray that it's because of God's law. And unfortunately, we don't know what that is anymore. And I would implore you, if you say, what is God's law? Go get Thomas Watson's masterpiece, The Ten Commandments, from Banner of Truth. You can probably buy it cheap online. Okay? Read that. Meditate upon that. We don't know what the, word, what the God's law is anymore. So in this, what was called a mockumentary, I, look, and I've had my disagreements. The reason why I'm bringing this up is I think that the people who are for the Islamicize me and, the, and they've, they've heard the criticisms from James White and all that are thinking that, oh, just because it's a criticism about the videos, therefore it's been kind of represented as, well, they don't want Islam exposed and all this. That might be true of some. And I disagree. I've dealt with this in other programs. I'm not going to labor on it too long, but I disagree with White's view on Islam. Okay? And very... Look, James White wrote a good introduction book. It deals with... If you want to compare Christianity with Islam in a very basic sense and you're want you want an introduction to it but there's nothing majorly deep in there there's no great heavy analysis going on there um this does mean it's not a it's a it is a very good book for what it is but james white will kind of go well it's islam can't say Islam's a violent religion, but you can't say Islam's a peaceful religion, and it becomes a kind of a, well, they say there's no consistent message. That's his view, okay? And I've done this in the program before. I believe he's wrong. Okay, I don't want to get into it, and things have gotten so ugly before, but the problem is you got that faction, and then you got the opposite side, which seems to have also gone the ends justify the means as well. And it seems a little bit the gloves are off because in this Islamicize Me video, which I watched the first one, it was, you know, it was disgusting. It was about urine. And I had to turn it off when there was a depiction of, and I don't even want to describe it in too much detail because it's just juvenile, disgusting, and stupid. Not everything that is disgusting needs to be shared necessarily in order to get a Muslim out of Islam. And not only did they do, you could quote it and say, oh, look at this ridiculous thing. And I'm not, I have no problem with that. You might kind of do a video on, hey, here are strange and unusual things in the Quran. But don't be like, the video was cheap mocking at the expense of Muslims. 
I'm sorry, but that's juvenile. If you go to Second or First Peter, uh, chapter three, verse fourteen, but it, but and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happier ye. But if but be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Verse fifteen. But sanctify the Lord in your hearts. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear or gentleness and respect or reverence. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that they falsely accuse you for your good conversation or good behavior in Christ. Let's look at another verse of scripture. None of this, none of the Islamicized me stuff is biblical. Yes, you can expose Islam. I have no problem with exposing Islam. Okay? I have no problem with a lot of the videos that Acts 17 apologetics have put out. No problem with it whatsoever. But there are times when they cross the line. There's a video from years ago. I think David Wood, you know, was, was in some kind of a dress or something like that. It becomes really strange and... Anyway, I digress. So, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 4. Neither filthiness, we'll read from verse, verse 1. Be therefore followers of God as dear children. And be followers of God, be imitators of God. And there's a, there's a love that God has toward those who are outside of Christ. There's... Um, R.C. Sproul in his book, God's Love, talks about this, this kind of threefold love of God. Now, from a sense of those who are outside of Christ, they're not well-pleasing before God. The wrath of God abides on them. But there's a benevolent and a beneficent love towards God, towards them. Another way to say that, God loves them. We should show love towards them. Compassionate. Thomas Boss, I was reading there recently, fourfold, um, I can't remember the full title of the book, Fourfold Nature of Mankind, I think it is, or Humankind, I can't remember. <laughs> mankind. Sounds very PC when I say humankind. Talks about God being compassionate and benevolent. That benevolent love. That I didn't want to see anymore. The, the, it was too graphic and disgusting violating so many scriptures for what? Because you just want to get people out of Islam. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1, be therefore followers of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. But fornication or uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be named among you as become its saints. Verse 4, very important here, verse 4. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting. Nor jesting is kind of like joking, I think it says in the ESV. Kind of joking, foolish joking, that they are not, which are not convenient, but rather giving thanks. For this ye know. Okay, so talks about no and. Unfortunately, right, there's immaturity, there's the, and, and it's unfortunately all over Christian ministries on the internet. We have this obsession with satire at the moment, that there's no seriousness and sobriety. I'm not just talking about Islamicized media, I'm talking about all across the internet, so many different websites, so many different ministries behaving extremely poorly at times. And it doesn't just happen. I think there's almost a bit of a shock for the guys who are involved in Islam size me. Well, what's the problem? Because, unfortunately, the line that they've crossed with Islam, and I do believe they've crossed the line, I do believe they've fallen to sin, just because, for example, if somebody's, you, you know, to, I don't believe it's appropriate or right to try and go out for the most offensive thing in order to expose Islam, you know, like going up to a Muslim and he's, you know, he says how 
great Muhammad is and all that. We should aim to be exalting Christ and even maybe point, not even pointing out, pointing out Muhammad is a mere man. We don't have to kind of seek to kind of go, oh, he was a pedophile. Got married at six, consummated at nine with Aisha. Oh, disgusting. And it is disgusting and vile. And it may be appropriate in certain situations. That's where wisdom comes in. You might be talking to somebody for an hour. For example, I'm not going to bring up that the, Ro that the Pope of Rome is the Antichrist straight away with a Roman Catholic. I have a few times when I felt that it's been pertinent. And if I talk about how the Roman Catholic Church has apostatized over the years, if the question comes up. It's called wisdom. And sometimes we get it wrong. And we learn from that. We, we try to share the truth in gentleness, showing care and love for that person. We want that person to come to Christ. Not just leave their false, hideous religion. Whatever that may be. Now, I know, I think there's, they brought up videos called Un-Islamicize Me later on. I haven't had the time to look into them. But on two fronts, I'm deeply concerned. Maybe three. And it's almost like the ends justify the means. Can we honestly say that this is about the gospel? I, I have no problem using Robert Spencer as a resource for what, in the same way you'd use many journalists who are not Christians, but you gain information from them and you use them as just another source. You read them, you don't accept everything they say, but you check everything and all this kind of stuff. The biblical way. What's the biblical way to share the gospel? You have to bear upon them. And you might use examples from the religion from time to time of how they have violated God's law. But the law of God, most gospel preaching, should be about exposing their need for a Savior. Exposing how they have broken God's law. Exposing how they are naked. And under the wrath of God, before God. They are, their greatest deeds are but filthy rags. And you may bring in aspects of what they believe, or people who they believe, in order to, you know, all this kind of stuff. Um, Acts chapter 17, Paul's talking to the Athenians, and he brings in uh, a quote from the poets. Francis Turretin did that a lot as well. He quoted a lot from, you know, philosophers and stuff like that to show how people are without excuse. The natural theology from the things revealed from nature, and look at Romans chapter 1, verses 18 to 20, talks about uh, they're without excuse, and also the law written on their hearts. But is it showing love towards them, just kind of making fun at somebody? And I think maybe to kind of, the other side seems to think, I think this is happening, that people are very sensitive when it comes to Islam, and not anything else. And I think, you know what, there's a valid criticism there. I don't think you should do it with anybody. Now you say, oh, look at Elijah and all this. They were ridiculous. They were crying out to their false god. And we can use s sarcasm at times in a serious way, not in a joking, mocking way, but in a serious way to expose the absurdity of what they believe. But it's got to be done in a serious-minded way. I'm concerned about both approaches. I'm, a, I'm concerned, and I've expressed my concern before, uh, we had a conversation with Mark Fitzpatrick, who is the minister of our Reformed Baptist Church in Dublin. What was it? Summer last year, about the dangers of inter interfaith dialogue and what it might lead to. Now, I'm massively concerned 
with the divisiveness as well, don't get me wrong, of unfortunately what Brandon House and others have been guilty of. And just to, for the record, they've done, I think they've done a lot more damage. They've done a lot of damage over the last year or so. And then I'm also concerned at the other side. It's like, oh, we see that Islam is uh, dangerous, horrible, and it's going to destroy the West and all that. True, true, true. And I agree with that. But then pragmatism kicks in because of a sense of panic. What should we do? David Silversides, who's, who's now retired from the pastorate in the church I'm uh, attending, Lockburg Reformed Presbyterian Church of Ireland, said, You can never be too biblical. I always said that a lot. You can never be too biblical. The response is to be biblical. Reject any approval or any support or any encouragement towards false teachers and false theology. 2 John 9-11. But also reject, as it says here in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 4, Foolish talking or jesting. And it's not just the Islamicize me guys, okay? It's all over the place. There are Christian comedy shows. People want to be entertained. This is the most popular thing. People are obsessed with satire. What does that tell you? I'm sorry, but if you're obsessed with entertainment, the word of God's not enough for you. The word of God's not enough for you. You have to be, everything has to be a laugh, a jovial foolishness draws you away. The Islamicized, this division that's been caused, right? And you know, after this program, I don't want to talk anymore about this, honestly. I, about this, that controversy. I, seriously. I remember with the whole IF Interfaith Dialogue thing last year, I said I was going to do two or three programs. reason why this time I want to, because I do believe there's merit to a lot of what James White said against the Islamicized me video. I do. I do believe he's right on uh, the verses that he pointed out. I think he pointed out Ephesians chapter 5 and First uh, Peter um, talk about meekness and re reverence and that gentleness. And he's right there. <sighs> Don't be followers of men. If, here's the thing, if somebody points out something right from the word of God, we should follow that. Even if they're wrong on something else, we should follow that. I'm not going to be right in everything. We should be unif, we may, brethren, let's get back to the basics. We may disagree with how we deal with militant Islam as our responsibility as citizens. I do, I, it's a serious issue. Don't get me wrong. It is a serious issue. However, something's far more important than how we understand the Quran and the Hadith and all this kind of stuff. Something far more important than that. The gospel. And if we're not unified on that, to share the gospel, Without having to give any credence or support to any false ideology or methodology or philosophy, you know, like altar calls and things like that. I'm not saying that anybody who I've just mentioned is involved in altar calls, but I'm just giving an example. The gospel and believing that it is the power of God unto salvation. That we trust him. We trust him with the means. That we obey him in all things. and where opportunity presents itself. We take it and we share the gospel. We stand in opposition against false religion, whatever it might be. 